So cool, we talked a lot about connectors. Now it's probably best just demo this and see how we actually integrate with a custom connector inside of a Power App. So to show this, I have an open API here and you can see all the different actions that I have here as far as being able to pull up information about plants. So this is a farm management API. I wanna be able to store information about the different plants that we have and track their inventory. So kind of a common use case and inventory management type system and API. So you can see the, uh, the Swagger or sorry, the open API file here. Um, now, how do we get this inside of our Power App? So the way that, one of the ways we can do that is by going back to that make.powerapps.com portal and clicking on the custom connectors option. And you see here on the new custom connector tab, these are those options where we can either import from an open API file or from a URL. So you'll just point that to the URL or file and it'll take you through the process. And you see I already have a custom connector here. And I'll just show you what it looks like uh, behind the scenes. So to find some information about where your host is, um, the security layer, and then the definition is really where everything is. When you import it, it will just automatically set all this stuff for you from your open API file. But this is, if you need to make any tweaks or anything like that, we can override some settings and stuff and the different actions or the different endpoints that we're calling here for our API. So it's really as, as simple as that. You have your different actions, it has built-in testing and even a Swagger editor that will open up the Swagger file itself so that you can see what's going on. Um, you can test and update. And if I wanna consume this, in my application. Um, I have another application for plant management opened up here. All I have to do to use my API is click on our data tab inside of Power Apps, go to add data, and we can use the search and search for the name of our connector, which is this SPF Farms API. So I have went in there, I've added that in, so now I can start using this inside of my application. So that's all a citizen dev has to worry about. They don't have to know the ins and outs of the API. All they have to know is, oh, there's that connector, add it into my app, now I can start using it. So if I wanted to say, be able to search different plants, I can go to my find a plant screen and I'll have a, just a text box where I can type in something to search. And on my search button, I'm going to use a local collection with Power Apps and I'm going to call my API. And I'm gonna call my API plant method I'm going to pass it in what I want to search for, which is the genus type of whatever I have in my text box there on the screen. And that's going to add all of my results that I return there in a local collection. And I have this gallery bound to that local collection. So it will display the results. So if we just give this a test here, I'm going to search for this type of genus of a plant. That's going behind the scenes. It's calling my API and it returned the results. I can see there's one result. And just so you can see that it works, I can search for one more different type. And now you see I have 124 results. And you see it's pretty fast as well. It's even returning things like images from the API or I can see the, the plant's name and what type of plant it is. So it's really that simple from an end user standpoint to securely and seamlessly integrate with your API. We can do things like returning that. We can also do things like searching for a particular SKU. So kind of similar setup, the search button is pointing to a separate endpoint. So when I do the search, I'm calling the SKU endpoint and I'm gonna pass it in whatever is my text box and search for a specific SKU and be able to determine what inventory I have on hand. Now, what can make this really cool is this can be used in an inventory management situation because one of the controls that we have in here is a barcode scanner. So you could have a power app with a native barcode scanner control that will just scan that barcode with the SKU and be able to automatically return back the details of that inventory in there. So that's really how easy it is to integrate there with an API. Okay. Now, when we talk about custom connectors and the different ones that we can use here, I just showed you integrating with an opening API document, but the other way that we can leverage custom connectors in Power Apps and the Power Platform is with Azure API management. So I thought I'd just show a little bit about where you might use each method, whether an open API document or Azure API management. 
So when it comes to API control, obviously Azure API management is going to be more centralized, whereas an open API document is distributed. Um, in the structure layer for Azure API management, it's going to be more complex, where an open API document is more simple. So uh, when it comes to basically um, having a centralized location, um, extra security layers, extra usage control, and all of that, Azure API management has a lot of benefits. Um, of course, being in, in Azure there, it's a little bit maybe additional cost um, and additional architectural complexity. So those are the, the key differences there. And how this would look maybe from a flow standpoint um, of an architecture standpoint, you would have a Power Apps application, the custom connector would talk to Azure API management, which is talking to your web API and that's talking to your internal and external services. And so to kind of sum up some of the benefits of why you might consider using Azure API management to host your connector rather than just doing what I showed in that demo there and pointing to an open API document directly is giving you the control and the ability to administer your web APIs from a central place. It's a big benefit. Uh, and also being able to uh, set policies to enable you to expose your you know, specific APIs publicly while maybe excluding others. And then of course, functionality be built into Visual Studio to export your APIs and just a more seamless experience. Being able to export these APIs is super simple. So actually, let me just skip right to that. And we're at Azure API Management now. We have two uh, APIs, we have employees and HR. If I wanna have a custom connector, all I have to do is say export. There's an option for Power Apps and Power Automates. I click that, I give it a name, click export, and that's all I have to do. I didn't have to worry about configuring anything, going into that make.powerapps.com. And now here in Power Apps, my endpoint there and my API is, is ready to use. And um, what we're seeing here is actually the Dataverse routines I was talking about. And here's another big reason that I really wanted to focus on, on why you would use Azure API management to host your connector. And that is if you're wanting to utilize Dataverse for Teams to host your application which allows you to use Power Apps to create an application with inside of uh, Microsoft Teams is because it's free and it's included in the licensing. So you can connect to Azure API management all day inside of a Dataverse for Teams hosted Power App. So it gives you uh, free extensibility. It's really, really awesome. Okay, and then lastly, so we've talked about custom connectors and why you might use them the different ways, whether with open API document or with Azure API management. Now, where does Azure Functions really come into play with this? Well, as we know, we can use Azure Functions to create serverless APIs. Big benefits of this being they're easy to implement thanks to the HTTP trigger. They're configurable with authorization, your HTTP methods and routes, and they're great for like single APIs. If you just have an endpoint where maybe you want to be able to upload an image to, post an image to, and have that go convert it to the base64 image and upload it to Azure Blob Storage or some kind of simple transactional thing like that. Um, Azure Functions are really great for that. And there are a few updates that have been made, which we're going to talk about here a little bit later on the demo section for Visual Studio that makes that integration with Azure Functions and Open API even that more seamless. Being able to have Open API support added to the HTTP triggered Azure Functions template, Azure API management import has been added to the publishing experience and then built in Open API UI and all of that. So, oh, that was a lot of talking. Um, so, that, those are the main benefits of like why you would use Azure Functions. Um, to host your APIs and how custom connectors use are used within Power Apps. Um, now, the other, for Azure API management, um, so I guess like, these are, I think the Visual Studio update was in March. So if you haven't updated Visual Studio in a while, I believe that was the 16.10 release where these new function updates were added for that. So definitely check that out. And I believe Justin will be talking more about that here in a little bit in the demo. Um, 